What's going on, everybody? Probably for the past two, three weeks, we've been talking about trim cards, altar cards, you name it, you know, fake slabs and all that. I came across an article by Sports Card Radio that, wow, it is so in-depth that if you have about two hours to read it and click all the links, you're going to be in shock with all this stuff. I'm going to put the link to the main article on there, and I just want to touch parts of this stuff because it gives the stories that I was talking about during my live sessions here recently. So let me pull this up. Okay, so this is the uh, article. You just can't see up here. It says uh, Sports Card Radio because of where I have a cut at. But um, the fake trim altered graded cards by PSA or BGS. Notice SGC is nowhere in here. Kind of odd offhand. Maybe because the resale value just wasn't there back then. I don't know. And if you go through here, they have like a lot of the highlights onto this. Um, most scammers, trimmers, cheats, consign, use consignments, which is true. Very true. PWCC and Prophecy have been huge pieces of it. If you remember me talking about Hero Sports. If you click on this, it's going to pull up this page here. Oops, sorry guys, let me go back up. I was just reading through it because I remember this product coming out because I was a breaker back then. And there was, like, when it first came out, they didn't even pack the whole thing out right. Then all of a sudden these hot boxes started coming out with, like, some of the, like, sell sheet items. So there was never... Any checklist, which is one thing I disagree about big time. Whenever you're doing a repack, there should be a checklist when it's a huge product. I can understand, you know, some of the people do their own stuff, 10, 20 packs and stuff like that, and throw a couple in there that, you know, do it amongst friends. That, that's a different type of repack. But when you're selling to out to breakers to do this stuff and that, you really need to have some kind of checklist out there with it because this happened, oh, let's say it was 2017, 18-ish, somewhere around there. It says so in the article offhand. But basically, this guy here um, bought his dad's company. It was an auction house. Decided to change it because it wasn't doing well to make his own repack product. And, I mean, it goes through there. If you're an old breaker from Breakers TV, you know who Bumo is. And everybody knows who Gelf is, or Gelfman. You, you know who they are. So, they were the ones that, you know, premiered it and all this other stuff. And there's even a part in there where it says, like, I guess for Beckett or somebody was running some kind of special, like, as many of them as you bought, you got entries into a giveaway. And one of the breakers... One that Babe Ruth uh, autographed. I guess it was a team ball or something like that. And I'm not too sure if they talk about it in here or not, but there was so much into here. It was one of the hugest things talked about with Heroes of Sports. And that's why I stay away from so many repack products. I mean, I got there's companies like Leaf out there. It does. It's been doing it forever. I just stay far, far, far away from it. If it's somebody I know that's just doing it so they can offload cards and I know like they're doing like 10 or 20 spots, I know the value's in there because I watch what all is pulled out of it. You know, they do it all straight there for you. Everything's shown. If they did a crappy product, nobody'd buy into it, you know. So, that, that, like I said, the people who do it personally amongst friends, that's, that's a way different story on to it. But, let's see here. There, there it is. There's a statement here. In 2015, they came out, oh, it was even older than that. I take it back, that's how old it was, 2012. Wow, now I feel really, really old now. I, it only feels like it was a couple years ago. Well, in 2015, they made a product called The Truth. And when you look at it, 22 of the 25 of those cards end up being sold on the PWCC uh, eBay account. They were never put in the product. That's what they came to the conclusion of. It's just a shame on this stuff. And the people that sponsored, uh, oh, here it is, Resurrected Heroes of Sport in 2019. Blowout, Hardsmith, Grand Slam, Collectibles, Leighton Sports, all participate in breaking the product. There was so many trim cards in this, it's not even funny. And you go down here and it starts talking about some of them. 
like this Kershaw and stuff like that. And when the card's serial numbered, you just can't get away with that. I mean, you guys, I'm telling you, if you have like two hours to read this one day, you know, save this video, do whatever you want to with it because it has so much information. There's so many trim cards out there. I don't know how many of them DSA and Beckett did buy back because they do have a policy on it that if they grade something that's fake, they're going to give you market value onto it if it's trimmed or something like that. Um, you really, really got to look into And this is what makes me the biggest concern is, you know, I'm sure there's a tolerance out there with cards on how much you can deviate off of it. Because I can recall back out of 2018 Bowman's Best, I pulled a red auto of, uh, oh, it's not, I don't want to say Jesus Lazardo. It was an Oakland A's guy. I cannot think who it is now off the top of my head. Well, anyhow, I pulled it, sent it into PSA, and they told me that its altar doesn't meet the spec or the, the, um, oh, I can't even think right now. The actual measurements to make the card real. And I'm like, I pulled this out of a pack. You know, and that was the odd thing onto it. So I got in touch with Tops and everything. And Tops end up uh, replacing the card for me. And, you know, basically they just made another one up and boom, I don't know how they did it. It came back to me. I sent the card back in and it graded out. So it was just really odd about that. So I was like, there has to be some kind of tolerance that's allowed onto it or something. It, it, there's no way all these things made it through unless there was like a lot of inside jobs. And it talks about, like, one of the guys who was in Hero Sports then moved over to PWCC and all that. There's so much information here. I mean, when you go down through here, you know, there's, you know, everybody started pointing fingers. Other people were breaking the product, da-da-da-da-da, and all this stuff. I mean, when you really look into it with what they did, these are all the guys from starting way back in the day. And then they gave us some nicknames and stuff like this. This guy here was real big at the card shows. Gary Moser, real huge. William Jamet, that's the guy that we were just talking about. He wrote the sports cards. Robert Block, another card trimmer. I mean, it tells you what they did. Shill bidding, fraudsters. All these card trimmers and stuff out here have been proven that they trim cards. Craziness. Crazy. It gives you areas where they're from, all that stuff. Let me go back to another article here. This one. Oh, this here, if you there's a hyperlink to it. This is talking about all the stuff that they found and stuff out there and when it was sold. Some of them have eBay item numbers. You got PSA cert numbers on here. I believe uh this guy here dealt with a lot of vintage when I clicked it up. But I mean seriously guys, look at this. There's eight pages of this. Stuff. Eight. All these vintages have been shown that this guy graded it, and nobody knows, you know, without going into depth and seeing it and trying to find the other card by different things onto it, that, you know, different markings and that, you know, what all was trimmed. But th all these serial numbers are on there. It, I'm telling you, this is the best thing I've found ever on anything to do with trim and altered cards. And I mean, Here's the very first card PSA ever graded. You guys remember, this is a long time ago when this card sold. And right down here it talks about the Gretzky Wagner was trimmed. The first card ever graded in eight was altered, trimmed, and Wayne Gretzky bought it. Of course, that got handled real quickly because guess what? It was Wayne Gretzky. I mean, <laughs> you know. But, I mean, when you start going down here and looking at all this stuff in here, you click all these hyperlinks to, you know, it talks about it, that card itself. The 52 Mantle. Uh, this is here, they removed dirt, glue, and pencil marks. I mean, Bill Russell's, Jordan's. This one here was bought by Vegas Dave, and then he sold it. I mean, sometimes guys didn't know. I mean, they were in for the flipping and stuff like that there. But, I mean, they these guys really did a lot of detective work. A lot of it's due to the blowout forum. 
these guys just band together and went out there and did a lot of this. And this article here just puts so much in perspective. And I would like at least skim through and start looking look at some of these cards because they may still be out there. I don't know which ones were bought back or nothing that they might talk about in all these articles. But it starts making you really think like LeBron James is there's a whole bunch of Curries on here. There look at this, this is a fake patch on this one. This Tom Brady. Sidney Crosby killed the cup rookie out of ninety nine. Put that patch in there. They were basically cutting these out and then getting patches and they were gluing them in there. Just to make it say, oh, I got a three color patch and it's now worth an extra couple grand or something like that. This is that Kershaw they talked about there being trimmed. Fake autographs that were out there. Um, a lot of it, I don't know if it was the auto pen or not, but if you guys don't know, Leaf trading cards used to be Razor before they got into being Leaf and all that. So. No, there an auto pen Richard Nixon card also made in the product. And back then, a lot of the presidents had these auto pens, or they had secretaries signing for them. And you really have to know autographs and know like where they push down more at to start and finish, and how they did their little hooks and all this stuff. I mean, I could never be a person that could authenticate autographs because there's just so much that goes into it, and then your reputation's on the line for it too. So, um, Trouts, look at this, there were nine, are they two, four, six, yeah, nine. Nine Trouts, the extra innings autographs that were trimmed. These were all put in repack products, too. And then they were supposed to be refrigerated. They were supposed to be in repack products, and they were sold then through PWCC Marketplace. They never made it in. Curry, curry, more curry. We're still on Curry's. This is Jordan, LeBron, and um, Garnett on this card here. Trimmed. Trimmed. Ruined a big card. But, I mean, look at what this stuff sold for back in the day. And this is one of the big things here that I was telling people. I, people used to make fun of me at work because I was, like, so happy I bought a Jordan Auto. And... When I was still active duty military, like, I was single, had to pay child support, all this stuff. And I joke around with a lot of people saying, like, I ate eggs and stuff like that cheaply so I could buy Jordan Autos and save up for them. But, you know, this was around the price that I was paying for stuff, anywhere from 500 to about 12 1500 really. I mean, now you look at the prices, you know, I always joke with those guys now from uh, the old office. I'm like, hey, 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 let me show you what this is selling for now. But, you know, it's all in good fun that I do that stuff. Look at that, Harper's. There's that Soto 101 where they erased uh, this piece right here coming off. Because the, the, he went off the card. Now, this here, from my understanding, was bought back by PSA. I don't know what they paid for it. Man, imagine if you'd have that card now. And you're like, oh, yeah, hey, PSA, you said you'd buy this thing back? <laughs> you got a ton of money there. Judge, that's a vintage stock. More trim. To, I mean, it just has so much information on here. Like I said, if you could sit there and have time one day to look at it, it's crazy. Like this guy, Gary Moser's changed his eBay. I don't know how many times when you start looking into all this stuff. But be careful. Like I, it's not. It's not like really like I'm trying to you know kill PSA and BGS for all doing all this stuff. But at the same time frame, we have to be careful what we're spending our money on out there. This is why I like to pull my own stuff or know somebody pulled it out of the pack and then you know, or they grade it and I get it from them. Because it leaves the mystery away from the item. Because if I go to get rid of it and somebody's like, oh man, that don't card looks like it's trimmed. I'm like, nah, dude, my buddy pulled it out of the pack, graded it, and I traded him for it. I know it's not trimmed. <laughs> you know, he's not going to sit there and take time doing that stuff. I mean... Honestly, I don't even know what you'd have to use to do that with and how, you know, precise you'd have to be. But, wow. And then there's their most wanted list again. Same people on to it. But I wanted to bring this up because we've been hitting a lot about this. And 
this covers so much money or so much um, information and money. They actually had, I think it's at the top here. Let me find my scrolly thing. I'm gonna go up real quick. Yeah, there it is. Over one point three million dollars spent on fake and trim cards. Now that's old, you know, older stuff. I mean, this stuff wasn't all during the surge and stuff like that. So just imagine the money value that was in there now. Or even five, six months ago, what it would have been like. This is what it sold for then, and not what it's currently worth now, I guess is the easiest way. But they have 533 documented trim slabs. And they're all pretty big. Except for that, um, like I said, that dude, um, Mosey, he was just getting everything vintage and doing it. He, I know he was real big in the card shows, too, because I can still remember seeing him at some of the bigger shows set up. I never bought from him, thankfully. <laughs> but, like I said, the link's in the description. You guys got about two hours, because I don't want to do, like, a two, three-hour video on this. This has so much information onto it that... It's going to be like, wow, like there's like a whole other world out there because I know I bring a lot of like this and little pieces of here and there, but this is like the whole big story. Huge. I mean, PSA's first graded card was altered. <laughs> I mean, just imagine you grade an Honest Wagner and you're still in business, you know, freaking, was that, uh, 20 some years later? Roughly 23, I think, 23 years later. Something, they at least did something right out there. I don't know, but it makes you really think about a lot of stuff that's going on in the hobby currently today and that it's been going on for a very, very, very long time. I mean, just immensely, there's a lot of stuff out there um, from fake slabs that are being produced with the fake labels and everything. And I'm hoping that the videos become more educational. I know you guys have been doing a great job getting the information out there. If you guys got channels, you've been talking about it. If there's, um, if you guys had friends and stuff like that, because I get emails like so and so told me about this. This is awesome, all the stuff on here and stuff. And I wanted to really bring to light a lot of this stuff this year onto it because. I mean, we work hard for our money and stuff, and to throw it away because, you know, all of a sudden you stayed up for a Jordan rookie and it's a fake or, it's, you know, it's been trimmed, that's devastating to somebody in the hobby. I mean, you would leave. I, I can't tell you, like, back in uh, 2004, I bought a Michael Jordan sticker rookie. I won it off eBay. Oh, I was so happy, too. You know, I was excited. I think I spent, like, I don't know, probably a couple hundred on to it. Mailed it off to PSA. They even mailed me the card back. They said it was altered. And I made phone call after phone call on to it. it. It just upset me. And to be honest, I almost walked away at that time frame from the hobby completely. Because I was so upset. And basically I stuck into it because it was just like my little get away from reality type deal. And then I ended up going to Iraq, and I just started purchasing stuff to open up when I got back. Because my whole idea is, was that I would not buy from other people anymore. I would open it and get it myself. Because then I felt safe onto it. And I was only dealing with people that I knew, um, you know, had a good relationship at that time frame. Probably for, oh, I bet you it was like two years. Because even when I'd set up at the shows and stuff. You know, a lot of people coming around, they would look at your card, oh, it's this and that and everything else. But, hey, I pulled it out of pack. That's pack fresh. If you got anything against you, need to go against Upper Deck, Tops, you know, whoever it was out there at the time frame. All right, everybody. I'm hitting, been going on for about 20-some minutes here, probably once I put the beginning and ending of the video in. Again, links in the description. I appreciate it, as always, guys. Um, I'm still going to be bringing stuff up like this, but this was just like the wow factor here tonight. I mean, I probably spent about two and a half hours, I bet you, going over reading all this stuff. And it just brought back a lot of memories of a lot of this stuff when it happened, because 
The internet is so powerful now with social media that stuff gets pushed out quickly. Back then, it really wasn't as big. I mean, if you were on, like, U.S. stream or something like that, and people were in, like, a break chat and stuff, you know, you'd hear about it. Like, oh, my gosh. And then it would go into one of the forums, like Beckett or HobbyInsider.net, stuff like that. All right. I'll see you guys. Wait, I don't even know when I'm putting this video out. But I'll catch you guys on the next video. I might be putting, I don't know what, like I guess I don't know what day I'm going to put this out yet because I got to get it all formatted and that. I don't know if it'll be up before the auction or not. But I do appreciate it. I'll catch you all later.